Are going to be talking about the functions, applications, and parts of a, an industrial walking foot machine today. Uh, this one that I have in front of me is particularly a King Max. It's used to handle a lot of thicker fabrics um, <clears throat> like draperies, cushion making. We also sew leather bags on this one. So it, it's meant to be a workhorse and have a lot of work performed on it. Now we're going to talk briefly about the parts of the sewing machine. And most sewing machines, whether they are an industrial machine or a home sewing machine, are pretty much the same. First, this is our hand wheel. It operates the needle and makes sure that it goes up and down. You always want to operate the hand wheel towards you. You never want to operate it away from you. Next part of the sewing machine is the presser foot. The presser foot can look um, many different ways. Different presser feet have different functions. This presser foot is a double presser foot. It has a back one and a front one, and they, they operate in a walking motion. You lower your presser foot by using this lever on the back of your sewing machine. Some levers will operate this direction, other, other levers will operate um, going towards the back of the machine. This sewing machine in particular also has a knee bar, which I operate with my right knee, which also lifts the presser foot. Underneath the presser foot are feed dogs. The feed dogs um, are pieces of metal that have grooved teeth um, machined into them. The feed dog's job is to pull your fabric through the sewing machine. The feed dogs move up and down with your needle. The rate at which your feed dogs move is determined by your stitch length. Stitch length dials on industrial sewing machines are usually going from zero or one to eight or nine. There may be different numbers on your stitch length dial. A good tip is to go through each of your stitch lengths when you get a new machine and decide which one um, is going to be the best for your sewing purposes. This dial here is your tension dial for the top. To loosen the tension, you would simply twist it to the left, and to tighten the tension, you would simply twist it to the right. This machine has a bobbin just like most home machines. And you load your bobbin with an unwinding counterclockwise. Make sure that when you hold your bobbin, it doesn't drop to the ground. It should stay suspended. The feature that this sewing machine has that I really like is a side bobbin winder, and that's this feature right here. You'd put a second spool of thread on your thread holder, put it through this thread guide, and then in this tension disc to keep your thread taut while it's winding. It's best to use an empty bobbin, but mine are all full. Always hand wind a little bit of thread before you put it on your machine. This machine is threaded similarly to many other sewing machines. It has a lot of different options um, for where to use the thread guides. Um, I like a particular tension on this machine, so I'm going to thread it the way I typically do. 
Always look for your thread guides. Every machine should have plenty of thread guides. When you're putting your thread in your tension disc, it's really important to raise your presser foot so that the tension disc opens and that your thread can go into it easily. On an industrial sewing machine, the needles are grooved. You always thread your machine from left to right. This coincides with the mechanics that are in the bottom of your sewing machine. All right, now we're gonna talk about some tension issues. On machines, on most sewing machines, if you're sewing along and something goes catastrophically wrong on the bottom, or looks like it went catastrophically wrong on the bottom, most likely there's a problem with the way your machine is threaded on the top. So here, I've purposely taken my thread out of my tension disc. And look what happened. So it looks okay on the top and looks awful on the back side. And that's because I took my thread out of my tension disc. Vice versa, if something goes horribly wrong on the top of your sewing, most likely you have an issue with your bobbin. Most sewing machines that have a bobbin that's removable will have a few screws on the bobbin. These screws can be loosened or tightened depending on what your machine is doing. We're going to loosen this up, see what happens. If your bobbin thread tension is too loose, your top thread will always bring up the bottom thread. So you'll always see your bottom thread on the top of your sewing. So here you can see that the bottom thread is being pulled up because I loosened my bottom tension. All right, if you haven't sewn in a while on your sewing machine, it's a good rule of thumb to do some practice stitching before you start working on your project. Just to make sure that nothing got loosened up over time, um, that everything's clean and working well. And also, you don't want to have to seam rip anything on your project that you're working on, especially when you just get started. Okay, so just a little bit of review. Like I said, most sewing machines are designed pretty much the same across the board. We have our hand wheel that manually operates our needle so that it goes up and down and sews for us. We have all of our thread guides for sewing. Look at your machine and see what thread guides are available. We have our tension disc. Some machines have one, other machines have multiple. More thread guides. And like I said before, on this machine and any standard um, industrial walking foot machine, you always thread your needle from left to right. This is our back stitch lever. You just press it down to do a back stitch. And our handy dandy bobbin winder on this side over here. So this machine can be used to do anything from product development to um, tent repairs or outdoor gear repairs. We use it to do drapery pleats and cushion making and pillow making. It handles a lot of the really tough fabrics that are just a little too thick for home machines to go through. It's a great machine. If you get an industrial machine, I suggest that you test drive them first and see what you're capable of and what you feel comfortable with. There are different sizes and different speeds of machines, but they're really fun to use. Thank you.